Jamie back from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today color swatching, comparing Copics with Ohuhu's and using both Ohuhu's and you know trying to show you how to make color palettes or swatches and all the things. So I will start with this is my 320 set of Ohuhu Oahu markers. I'm going to call them bullet nibs. That's what I know them by because that's just you know so it's what I do. This one is computer generated, so it's definitely something you can make up on your, I do it on open office. I'm sure you can do anything like that. It's basically just a drawing document and making squares and making it work. I lost the file for this one when my computer crashed last fall, so I don't have it available to me. I will have to make something new if I choose to go this route. I will probably use my old system for when I actually go through and do all of my colors, which it's going to happen, but it's probably going to take me some time because they take a while. I, I, I use Lindsay Wordish's The Frugal Crafters method of punching a hole in the middle. It helps to make finding color matches a lot easier. So these are my bullet nib or my Oahu ones and these are my Honolulu ones and so there's not all the same colors aren't in all the same sets and so when I pulled out I'm gonna go for a, a red blend today when we color and so I kind of pulled some from my Copics that I thought would work and then found matchy as close. We'll see how close of a match I got on the Uhuhu line. But so I had gone with Garnet Rose and Coral Haze, which are in the Oahu line, but not in the Honolulu line. So when I was trying to find color matches for them, I kind of can go... The strong red looks close to me. And by going over, you can kind of see it's going to be a little bit different but it's a fairly okay blend and by putting the hole in the middle you can kind of see like that's not going to work that's going to be way too dark and so you don't have to it takes some of the guesswork out of it i guess when you're doing it that way so that's kind of how why these are so important because you definitely can use them to go now when i did these i had done my original sheet which had all the colors on them and just one, two, three, four, five, and kind of went and you know picked which colors I felt went together the better, the best. It probably took me you know four or five hours to finish that up. So it's, I kind of did this one is the same way. These are all on these ones here on my blog on that Oahu marker blend page, and so. There are resources there. They're there for you. You're more than welcome to go and search it out and find it. But that's kind of what I did with these. I colored in my cards that came with it and then I just started figuring out where my matches were going to be, what looked like it might go together, and then trying it out because sometimes we don't know until we try it. And so I think that's important to swatch, do some practice coloring. You know, all you need to do is scribble on a separate piece of paper. It's not, it doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be beautiful, it is what it is, right? So when I do my color swatches, and usually I do like a color swatch for a paper pack. So this one is for Simple Stories, I just used this one. It is a Simple Stories, I think it's like Simple Vintage Blooms or something like that, but it gives you all the colors that you need. And so when I'm doing that in a color, trying to figure out a color palette for say a new paper pack or I have some inspiration or I, I know what stamps that I want to use or I know I want to use a paper pack. Building a swatch like, I don't know, it's kind of like a card map or a color map really kind of helps to just kind of build one from the paper pack and then I usually try to write it on the the one that I did so I can go back and use that one for those types of things. So I try to usually do a Roy G. Biv style color palette and so I, I build it from there. So I will take these ones and I will go okay let's see I want to do so for my red I'm going to come in here and kind of pick out a red. Those ones don't look like they're the right right ones. This one could maybe be a darker red. 
Um, let's see here. No, those ones get to the pinks. Let's see if there's another. Let me say there should be some more reds back here. All right. So this one is more along this line, and by putting that hole in there, you can kind of see how you can figure out what colors are going to go well together. So this one looks more this one and this one. So those would probably be two that I would pull out and go. So usually I pick one color and then I find the lighter tones that are going to go with it. I usually write all my markers down, then I pull them and try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work and I need to, you know, readjust. But for the most part, that's how I build it. I would probably take the red, the yellow, maybe a lighter yellow, darker yellow. I try to do three to four colors when I do a color palette because it gives me, I can go, I can go with the darker two or the lighter two and get a different, kind of different blend on them and gives me a little bit of variation. Plus you're putting the work into making that palette. And if you give yourself more color blends and or options, it kind of gives you a little bit more, you know, a little more use out of the work that you put into it, if that makes sense. I don't actually have a color palette for this one yet, but I'm sure someday it will happen. The other thing to do is if you don't have a computer, you don't feel comfortable doing it that way, this is probably my favorite waffle flower color swatches for watercolor set. I picked it up on Amazon. Waffle flower actually has an Amazon shop. So I will link that down below if you are interested in picking it up. I usually cut all of my paper to size knowing what I want for my swatches to look like. When I do it in this style, so when I do it in this style, I actually make sure I have enough on each side and stamp it in the middle. So I will set it up in my Misty and then just go to town, stamp, move it, stamp, you know, ink, stamp, ink, stamp, move. And then I will cut it down the middle when I'm all done because it gives me two of these for the price of one stamp, you know, for one stamping. And so that kind of helps. Those are, you know, this is probably my favorite one. This, I don't use the circle one as much, but I still use it from time to time. It kind of has that, the five, and if I only need five, or I, I use that one a little bit more earlier on. I don't use it as much now just because I'm really not great at coloring circles. And so <clears throat> it's, it, it is what it is, right? So that's kind of where, I don't know, swatching kind of goes. There's plenty of different swatching tools on the market. That's just the one that I like. It works well for me. To do the holes in my swatch sheets, I just use the the chompers from, is it Memory Keepers or, I think it's been, I don't know. Anyways, the big chompers, I usually just do one and then line it up and do a stack. So not a huge stack, but a, sta a big enough stack that it can go through quite a few sheets. So it saves you a lot of time. So once you have everything colored, then I go back in and I chomp the hole in the middle. It just makes it fast. So these are the waffle flower ones. These ones are the computer generated ones. It's, you know, they're handy tools. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. I have multiples of those. So let's get started with some coloring and doing some comparisons. So for my Copics today, I'm bringing in R39, which is garnet. We'll do that one here and our 29 lipstick let me write these down so we are doing our 39 and our 29 in the Copic and then for I think that one is I think Garnet Rose is my darkest color. Don't quote me. I guess we will find out. And <laughs> Coral Haze is my lighter tone. Yeah, looks about right. Okay, so R480 and R584. And so this one is the Oahu in the Honolulu, or the, in the, in the Ohuhu brand. And then for the Honolulu ones, we've got R230 and R200. Let 
30 and 200. So strong red and coral essence in that Honolulu one. Let me write that down. So how are they going to blend together? They do, you know, it, it, they blend fairly well, just like all Copics. I, I will tell you that I'm a lazy colorist when I do my coloring. I don't, I don't prep it with anything. I don't pre-color with the lighter tone and then come back over with the darker tone and, you know, put my shadows in where I want my shadows. I just kind of do my thing. I am going to try not recapping them today in between because that is my usual method of madness. It's just how I learned or how I started and so it was, that's just how I do things, right? And then I usually do, if I'm only doing two and I want a fairly good blend, I'm going to go back over, so I do my first layer and then kind of go over it again with my second layer in that lighter tone because it'll bring a little bit more color into this one and reds are going to be a little trickier but I think you get an okay blend without working it too hard right can you tell I haven't colored with brush markers for a while I mean I do once in a blue moon and then you can always come back in with that darker tone and drop another layer on your shadow to intensify that color again. The big thing with coloring with alcohol markers is going over your hard line, if that makes sense. So when I go in with my darkest tone, I'm gonna come back in later with my next tone and I'm gonna go over that line again. So when I switch to the Honolulu or the Oahu, Ohuhu's, I went with the bullet nib. A, they were cheap. I could get 320 colors for $160, $170. I'm pretty sure I got them on sale, so I didn't even spend that much. And so it was all of the marker colors for a little bit of the money. I have probably, I don't know, $1,000 in Copics from you know 15 years of collecting them and I liked them my old ones work well I came into I actually switched to oh hoo hoo's in early 2020 because Copics were coming out with a new a new refills and my grays were all out and so I couldn't get my refills for my grays and I was out and I needed grays and so I looked at doing I think it was another another set of grays and so I looked at adding the toner grays to my my stash and I had heard a little bit of hubbub about the ohuhus and I thought okay maybe and then I saw the price and I saw the price difference and I was like that's a lot of I could get like all the grays for what I was going to spend on just the Copic gray set and so that's kind of what what got, it was on sale and they worked I was pleasantly surprised with their quality and how they worked. I will say that if you swatch them, I've dealt with customer service. They were wonderful. I had swatched out all of them and I had one that was dry. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that's kind of why I also kind of got off of the Copic bandwagon. I had bought probably 12 Copics because I wanted to fill in some color gaps and I ended up throwing six of them out within like two months, three months. I bought refills for the one and even that refill was, I refilled it and it died again. I was unimpressed. Can you say unimpressed? Yeah. And so I just couldn't see sticking more money into it because I think I bought those after I bought in the Oh, hoo hoo's thinking, well, these will fill in my color gaps and then I can add to my Copics as I can afford to. 
and yeah I was just not impressed with their quality anymore and that's ultimately why I ended up switching but so my I did not pick dark enough colors probably in my hoo-hoo's to match my Copic but it's you know it's fairly good so on those they, they all kind of blend the same it's how you work it if you're working it well now I will say that I like the brush nib for that bigger area I like the bullet nib for smaller areas I have really bad arthritis in both of my thumbs and it's easier sometimes for me to draw with the smaller nib to get into the smaller detail stuff but I like the brush for other things as well and so that there's that right and so it's definitely one to go into now let's talk brush tips I I can't say I prefer one over the other I think the Copic brush tip is a little bit I don't know they're about the same for the most part I think um, let's see here where's this one so strong red so it's maybe not as giving as the Copic one it's a little bit firmer I think but with the Uhuhu brush nib it can be reversed so I can take this one out and switch it in into another one the other benefit to the Uhuhu one is they do have brush refills they aren't too bad. I don't remember how many come in a pack. I think it's between 6 and 10. I'm not exactly sure. I'd have to go and look it up. And they're like not too bad. I think they're like 4 four to 5 bucks for a pack of them. I just bought a bunch when I bought my brush markers only because I was trying to be figuring I needed to be on top of it right I'm gonna go with the lighter color and finish that one up I think and then because I'm gonna use the broad nib because it's a larger area but that way I can take I, I ended up switching out one of my broad nibs on I think my colorless blender and it worked well with the brush nib fit in there so I mean I'm not worried if it dries out because it's a colorless blender and I just bought a new pack but it's you know so they blend beautifully they work well even with your Copic so that's Copic and a hoo-hoo's all both kinds of the hoo-hoo's mixed in there and so you get you know it's an alcohol marker I think they all about work the same I've had um chameleons which I liked but they kind of were opposite of what I was used to coloring because I go darkest to lightest I you know if you're more of a light to dark definitely start with your lightest layer and then build up your color don't be afraid to do two layers uh, a lot of times with blues reds and browns sometimes and grays you might need a second layer to give a fuller in-depth color this one can definitely get darkened up by going with a second layer those are all things that work well so anyways that is kind of how I do my color swatches kind of comparing the two brands marker wise and nib wise so to conclude you know you can tell that they all color about the same it's not gonna be a huge drastic contrast I've colored with multiple alcohol markers I started with Copics and then when I was still with close to my heart um, I think they started with uh, twin touch markers alcohol markers and so I have a bunch of those I still have those I don't use them a lot just because they're not in my direct sight I used to have chameleon markers those ones are kind of fun but they're definitely different but I learned a lot from them because of adding the colorless blender and then working it out so it made me less afraid to do tip to tip and if you can't find a great color blend mix tip to tip is a great method let's just go I mean these ones should go tonally I think these ones are gonna be okay so let's go blue and this one's purple right yeah yeah I think these will totally be all right so I'm gonna go purple and blue oh, I want the other side of the blue so usually if I do tip to tip let's see we'll go this way going tip to tip I usually do big to little 
or you know brush to that one and then making sure that I didn't contaminate that marker I'm gonna go that route but then when you go into color you're gonna start with the blue and then it will fade out to that purple and so I was always afraid to do that with my Copics because I spent all that money I was afraid it was gonna ruin my marker and so when I got the chameleons it was just like a it was a fun I don't know I wasn't afraid to do it with them and so it's definitely a really cool look for unicorns and mermaids and all those things so it's something to try to do this is a video too there will be another one um in closing I don't know did I miss anything if you haven't checked out the Etsy shop yet that that big list is on there that relates to video one so if you missed video one go back and watch that one that kind of explains how I did my list on my solid list is done I don't have it colored yet it's yeah I'm, I'm waiting for my marker holder to come in so I can do it when I put my new markers in my new holder and hope for the best right and then I have to rearrange all the area but that's kind of where I'm at with it and I hope you have a great day I hope you find the information you know those color combos are definitely always going to be on my blog on that tab on the side it's easier to find them there than trying to scroll and find which card they went with um Jessica Squirrel has all of hers for the Honolulu line up on her blog I will list and link that one down below and she also has them on the Fab Five Facebook page I will list that one down below I need to write notes to myself because I will forget all of these things was, was there anything else that I needed to to say do like subscribe comment you know all of those things I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and keep getting inky and bye.